Thank you, Songhe. Um, so my my case will be um, a little bit different from Barrett, but um, quite the same situation as small baby. Um, this is four months old baby. Um, it's 2.6 kilo, so um, the birth weight was 2.9. But as you can see, um, as time goes by, the baby is getting thinner and thinner because of the pneumonia, respiratory failure, and heart failure because of the you know uh, the lesion of the severe coarctation. And uh, mild to moderate size VSD, so they transfer this baby to our hospital with the diagnosis of this, uh, including the mosaic Turner syndrome. Um, so from the echo, um, uh, we found that it is doubly committed VSD, about 4 to 4.5 millimeter left to right shunt, and severe discrete um, juxtaductal coarctation with narrowed lesion at isthmus and diameter about 2.8, and peak gradient about 53, and uh, on the left atrial and left ventricular enlargement. So at that time, we discussed with the surgeon, and the surgeon agreed to go for just uh, coarct um, repair. Uh, because it seems like the VSD is not really that big, uh, and just because of the, the body weight of the baby is just less than three kilos. So if the surgeon is going to go for bypass surgery, probably would be quite an issue on, on that. So that's why um, he preferred to do just coarctectomy and a PDA division. Um, but um, the, the story doesn't go as we expected. Because uh, before surgery, the heart size just like this, well, definitely is quite a large heart and mild congestion. But as you can see, after surgery, it's getting even worse. Um, so we wait, we treat, you know, giving diuretics, um, whatever, giving inotropes, and, and hope for the best that that, uh, you know, will be getting better. But it's not really that what we expected. Uh, for three weeks after surgery, we could not vein off anything. Um, I mean, enotropes are still, still there. Ventilator dependent and body weight is still not increasing. So just 2.8. Um, so this is the echo. So um, just to show you, there's a um, um, mild LV and LA dilatation, definitely. And the VSD is there, just sitting underneath the aortic valve. And definitely, this is the outlet VSD uh, appearance. Uh, it doesn't seem big in comparison to the aortic valve annulus. And here, as you can see, the jet of the VSD is heading towards the pulmonary artery, and the coarctation is not an issue here because it's no obvious obstruction. Uh, so the blood pressure is quite similar between the upper and lower extremities. Then it comes to the question, if you can help me, whether this is the problem related to that VSD, which is not really big, and if so, how can we help the baby? So if anybody can help me? Okay, then I'll try to show a little bit more. So at uh, that time, we, we are not really um, happy because three weeks, not improving. So then we decide to bring the babies to the catheter lab in order to at least uh, justify the uh, the uh, the the indication of the closure of this VSD. So um, this is what we found in the CAT lab. So the PA pressure about 60% of the systemic circulation, the QPQS about 1.4, and the PVR about 3.5. And as you can see here, the VSD is just there, not that big. And the coarctation actually is, is not an issue. Right, so now I'm in the CAT lab with the baby, uh, with the information like this. So maybe if you can raise your hand, will you do anything with this or not? So will you close it percutaneously? Raise your hands here. What can I might have missed? Can you? Yeah. Can I see the echo if possible? Sure. Oh. I think, Vorakan, this is too small a VSD to cause this kind of clinical picture. It is. I don't know, uh, I don't know uh, what's the issue. Yeah. But, you know, I would look at some other issues like uh, sepsis, hemoglobin, mm. Uh, mm. some such thing for the baby to get so sick with a VSD of that size. Right. Yeah, and to be honest, we, we did everything what you, what you suggested. Uh, we give antibiotics, we clear an infection, and we're quite pretty sure that no fever no sign of sepsis, and again, not be able to weaning off the ventilator. Work and, the, yeah. the coarctation repair looks quite good, but yeah. just wondering, how about the size of the arch? Um, 
The uh, I can't remember exact the uh, exact diameter. Okay. Uh, but it as looks, you can see, uh, yeah, it looks it a looks little a bit, bit small, small here. To me, yeah, yeah it, it's a little bit small here. But uh, we we did pull back and no obvious pressure gradient from ascending right. aorta, okay. arch and descending aorta. Thanks, Thanks Shiva. And you should consider the stiffness of the aortic aorta because this is patient has a Turner syndrome. Yeah, right, and and. Obviously, there is no gradient here also uh, from the subaortic um, obstruction or the supravalvular uh, obstruction here. So again, it stuck um, to the, the point that um, whether this VSD caused a problem or not. Um, so um, on measurements, even you know, smaller, it's about three millimeters at the aortic end, at the RV exit. So uh, now we have... Oh, Jay Young, please. I need oh. your help. <clears throat> May I? Uh, do, do you have uh, this, um, what was the LV and diastolic pressure? Uh, we didn't measure. So actually, the, the permeative pressure is higher than normal, yeah. 60%. Yeah. And uh, in this patient, I, I uh, suspect that the, the patient has high LA pressure. Mm. Uh, and uh, the patient has uh, some increase uh, the, because of the transverse arch, hypoplastic transverse arch. This mm. patient has some increased after load, right. and the LA pressure is high, which mm. is a, a very, uh, not a good combination. Uh -huh. So there, even though the LV looks, uh, the LV accessory function is uh, the, the okay, yeah. but the, this patient has uh, some significant hemodynamic uh, problem, mm. or such a sub problem. May, maybe cardiopin may also decrease. I see. So, so any suggestion on so this? Should some I close treatment. the VSD or what? Best medical treatment should okay. be uh, tried, and if uh, it couldn't be helpful, it, it is not helpful, right. then you can, for example, in this kind of uh, the hypoplastic, the transverse arch, the balloon, balloon dilation does not help, but transiently, the staged balloon may have some, some small help, right. may, which may uh, the change the situation. Yeah, so that time, we, to be honest, we were quite frustrating what to do. Uh, balloon angioplasty of the aortic artist is quite risky for, for us, I think, because uh, it's just, you know, three weeks and um, not really obvious obstruction. So, uh, so we thought probably should we close it? Um, definitely the surgeon won't do it, right? Because it's not that big and, you know, with QPQS just 1.4 and it doesn't really make a difference in terms of the surgical outcome, I think. Um, so we thought probably try to close this percutaneously, and then how can we close it? Like which device and what techniques? Um, so to make a story short, so at that time we thought it should be a low profile device, you know, getting accommodated with the smaller size of the sheet. So we thought probably about ADO1, I mean ADO2, sorry, or the, the MFO. But again, the this is past six to the waist diameter. Let's say you have, uh, if you're gonna use this patient about five to six millimeter, it's plastic, it's gonna be 12 millimeter on the left, I mean, outflow track and also right outflow track. So, still challenging. And in, on the shelf, we also have the Chinese made uh, multifunctional occluder, which is quite similar to uh, the PDA plus another disc here. So also, this is very sleek device and very, very low profile, uh, again, but it's plus four, uh, six or seven millimeters. Um, so that, at the first time, we thought probably we try this one, MFO, five, seven, so as you can see, we implant the device from the, I mean, from the left ventricle side, and then we open the disc on the left side, the waist, and then another disc on the right side. So you can imagine that after implanting, and there are obvious obstruction of the outflow on the left side, and also the obstruction of the, right flow, uh, 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 the outflow on the right side. Then definitely we can't leave this device in place. Uh, so it comes to the question again, so shall we stop, just leave the, like, leave the patient like that, or should we choose another device? Any suggestion? Please help me. Um, I'm sweating. You are on your own. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank Omar. That's very, very uh, beautiful uh, comment. Right. So that time we thought about ADO2 AS. Um, why? Because it's just 1 to 1.5 millimeter adding up of the waist diameter on the disc uh, left and the right side. But, well, definitely I haven't used that before on the outlet VSD and haven't used that before for VSD as well. Um, so we thought probably we'll try with the 5.2.
Why two? Because it's a very short one, and we, we saw that the, the, the longer one doesn't work really, really well. So we use that. So this is ADO252. Five means the diameter is five, the two is the length between this and this is two millimeters. So we again deploy uh, as a conventional way from the, uh, from the left ventricular side, and then open the disc like this, like, like that. Um, we choose that because what I was saying uh, previously, and then this is the echo. So obviously, it's still touching the aortic valve. There's mild AR. Previously, there's no AR. Again, come to the question, should I do anything or should we just leave it like, uh, I mean, just retrieve it? So this is the angio, LV angio, looks okay. And the um, aortic root angio, there's a mild AR. So again, it comes to the question, release or retrieve? So will you release? Raise your hand, please. Still with me? Okay, will you retrieve? Okay, so most of, of uh, the audience and everybody think that probably we will retrieve. Uh, but we did the other way around because we thought um, first, well, the baby is sick quite a long time. We can't do anything. And as I said, the surgeon won't do anything, definitely. So why don't we give a chance? If there's a problem, we can ask the surgeon to do it later on. But if we are lucky, I would say, uh, we, may, we may help the babies. Uh, so we release it. And then, as you can see, it's touching the aortic valve, but not that much in comparison to the previous um, device that we put. And there's uh, a mild aortic leak. Uh, so we are lucky, actually. Uh, the baby can be off ventilated three days later, stop for five days later, and discharge home 10 days after the procedure. Uh, so what, what we have learned after one month follow-up, the AR has disappeared already. Device is sitting very nicely in place uh, without any problem with the outflow on the run on the left side. So, just to conclude, ladies and gentlemen, that sometimes 4.5 millimeter VSD may not a, a small defect in a suffering baby, and AD2AS can can be useful uh, even if you deal with the outlet VSD uh, in small baby because it's very short term. Uh, this and it's soft device, you can deal with uh, uh, that in a small baby too with a high occlusion rate. So thank you very much indeed.